Hey everyone, this is Bill, and welcome to the channel. Today we're talking real estate. More specifically, we're going to visit the topic of the security deposit, which is a very important item in the leasing arena and management of an investment property. So join us. First, let's learn more about the security deposit and define what a security deposit exactly is. Well, if we consult that bastion of knowledge known as Wikipedia, we find that the security deposit is defined as a sum of money held in trust either as an initial part payment in a purchasing process, often used to prevent the sellers selling an item to someone else during an agreed period of time while the buyer verifies the suitability of the item or arranges finance, also known as an earnest payment, or else in the course of a rental agreement to ensure the property owner against default by the tenant and for the cost of repair in relation to any damage explicitly specified in the lease that did in fact occur, end quote. Investopedia notes the security deposit is, quote, a security deposit is money that is given to a landlord, lender, or seller of a home or apartment as proof of intent to move in and care for the domicile. Security deposits can either be refundable or non-refundable, depending upon the terms of the transaction. A security deposit is intended as a measure of security for the recipient and can also be used to pay for damage or lost property, end quote. So now that we've taken a stab at defining the security deposit, how much is a security deposit? Well, the amount of the security deposit varies depending upon the parameters set by the landlord in terms of a rental agreement. Oftentimes, it's the first and or last month's rent. It should be noted that while some communities do, our company, we do not utilize the deposit as a candidate for the last month's rent. Typically, we use the security deposit for a couple of different things. First, when a prospective tenant states they wish to move forward with the rental process and sign a lease agreement, we collect the deposit after their credit has come back, meeting our criteria as a form of insurance in the event they do not take possession of the unit. If the tenant fails to take possession, say they won the lottery and scooted off to Hawaii, we would issue a claim on the deposit as we have pulled the property from the market in terms of advertising and we would need to start the process of securing a new tenant all over again. Once the new tenant is in place, the role of the security deposit changes. Now, the earnest money is in place as a vehicle of insurance to compensate for the potential loss of rental income if the tenant has failed to adhere to the lease agreement in terms of timely payment and vacates the property or is forced to vacate the property, or damages to the unit that the tenant made that we can verify during their time occupying the unit. Investopedia notes, quote, for example, if a renter breaks a window or causes permanent damage to the floors, walls, or infrastructure of the property, then the landlord can use the security deposit toward repairs. Typically, if the property is in good condition without the need for repair, when the renter moves out, the security deposit may be refunded to them, end quote. So, we collect the deposit to reserve the unit, and then once the tenant is in the unit, beginning their lease term, we shift the deposit over as a type of damage deposit, be it loss of rent and or material physical damage to the unit. It boils down to leave the place in the condition you found it while accounting for normal wear and tear during the time period of the tenancy under the lease agreement. The deposit money is not money to be utilized within the daily operation of the business, but rather placed aside. If placed in an interest-bearing account, the tenant is owed a portion of the return. This is not the case in a non-interest-bearing account, which we utilize. Now, it should be noted that in recent years, we have moved away from describing the transaction as a security deposit due to the fact that the description potentially offers an implication of some sort of security, which we do not provide beyond our reasonable scope of property management and upkeep. Some have considered the deposit not as a security deposit, but as a damage deposit, 
And that works for us in accurately labeling the deposit once the tenant has moved in. The deposit for us is mainly an insurance mechanism to protect the property from dereliction and damage beyond normal wear and tear. And it also acts as an incentive for the tenant to be a good custodian of the property during their tenancy. Investors in the know are known to label the deposit as performance oriented. This action ties the return of the deposit to the tenant's performance in protecting and perhaps enhancing the property during their tenancy. Skin in the game, if you will. We think this is a great example of teamwork and helps keep the property in good condition. So at the end of the tenancy, the first item of consideration is did the tenant fulfill the terms of the lease agreement? That's very important. And in order for them to get their deposit back in full, they must adhere to the terms of the lease agreement. Now regarding a hot topic, if a tenant does not complete the entire term of the lease, we view them as forfeiting their lease agreement. Although many big communities do, we do not attempt to charge the tenant for the rent for the full term of the lease for insufficient notice of them departing. This kind of strikes us as unethical as we can usually rent our units at a higher price once we get it cleaned up. We review the unit for any items damaged beyond normal wear and tear. We have recently performed before move-in and after move-out videos beyond the possible education and entertainment value, this, this documents the condition. In review, if items are identified that extend beyond normal wear and tear, then while considering the economic life of the said unit, we make a claim for the expenses associated with the repair of said item. Now, should a landlord wish to impose a claim, along with the letter noting the intent to impose a claim, the landlord must include a detailed itemized description and estimated cost of repair of each of the items. Now, generally speaking, the estimated cost is conservative unless there are major items with significant repair or replacement costs associated with them. Once we have evaluated and determined the condition and reviewed whether the tenant has fulfilled the terms of the deposit agreement and lease agreement, we establish the amount to be returned to the tenant. In Florida, where we work and play, if a claim on the deposit is to be made, the deposit and the claim must be sent to the last known address within 30 days. If no claim is warranted and the tenant is to receive their full deposit back, it must be returned to the last known address within 15 days. Now, while this seems reasonable and routine, the timely return of the security deposit is very important in the eyes of the law. So this should give you enough information about the security deposit to utilize and govern this responsibility in adequate fashion. Do keep in mind the deposit operates in dual capacity, protecting you and the tenant. It is their money and you are in custody of it until they move or they violate the lease agreement or are forced to move, or until the lease expires. So do treat this aspect of the leasing process with respect. Well, folks, thanks for watching. We hope this helps you understand more about the security deposit. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up. Hit us up down in the comments. We'll, we'll see if we can answer them for you. If you've got some thoughts about the security deposit, I'm always looking to learn more about it. So stay tuned with us in the management of real estate. You never know what's going to happen next. And if it happens to us, we might talk about it here. Take care, everybody. See you next time.